Welcome to the Natural Super Kids Podcast, where you will discover practical strategies to inspire you to boost the health and nutrition of your kids. I'm Jessica Donovan, a qualified naturopath specializing in kids' health, and I want to make it as easy as possible for you to raise healthy and happy kids. Let's get into it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Natural Super Kids podcast. Jessica Donovan here. And today I'm joined by our Natural Super Kids clinical nutritionist, Mel. Hey, Mel. Hello. So good to have you back on the podcast. Thank um, you for having me. And today, you know, the, the idea of this episode is to share an amazing case study um, of a client that you've recently worked with. Um, and we want to talk specifically about heavy metals in this podcast. So we'll get to the case study shortly. Um, before we get started and start talking about, you know, what exactly heavy metals are, how they impact our children's health, how we test for them, how we can start to think about reducing our kids' exposure to heavy metals, um, and of course, your case study. Uh, can you just introduce yourself for people who might not have heard you talk on the podcast before? Yeah, sure. So as Jess mentioned, I am the clinical nutritionist here at Natural Super Kids. So I see clients two days a week for Natural Super Kids. Um, and a lot of that is uh, pediatric clients, so children um, and, you know, wide range of symptoms. And with those symptoms, sometimes we go down the functional uh, testing path, which we'll get into in regards to heavy metals. But um, yeah, and then outside of that, I also uh, help with a wide range of things with Natural Super Kids. So um, a lot of admin, a lot of uh, club support for our membership. So I have my finger in a lot of Natural Super Kids pies, that's for sure. You sure do. I definitely couldn't live without you, Mel, on the team. <laughs> um and I just love that you're such an all-rounder and that you're, you know, willing to to dive into lots of different projects. It definitely makes the the workday interesting, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. No two oh. days are the same. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So let's start with the basics because I can't believe we actually haven't discussed this topic on the podcast yet. And I feel like this could lead to more topics. But today we're going to take a, a, you know, a bird's eye view, a general look um, at what heavy metals are. Uh, so can we start there? Like, can you explain what are heavy metals? Yeah, sure. So I'm going to take you back to, you know, high school chemistry. Um, <laughs> and the term heavy metals is related to the elements that are found on the periodic table. So these elements are naturally found throughout the environment. And they're used by industries to manufacture a wide range of common products, including batteries, pesticides, um, all the way through to like amalgam fillings. Not that we, you know, have them anymore, but um, if you've got some in your mouth, then you're linked to a heavy metal. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, some of them such as iron, copper, selenium and zinc are required in really small trace amounts for the body for normal function. Um, but where we get into, I guess, the tricky parts when it comes to heavy metals is when they reach high levels in the body um, and they can become toxic to the body. Yes, yes. Such a good explanation. And I think that makes it really clear. Um, and, you know, I guess the problem these days is that our kids are exposed to, I mean, we talk often about how kids are exposed to more and more chemicals and toxins within their environment. And, you know, heavy metals are a big part of that. So can we talk now about how some of these detrimental heavy metals impact our children and their well-being? Yeah. So, once they, I guess, reach high levels or toxic levels circulating within the body, um, they can cause a wide range of symptoms. Generally, I think a lot of the time I think neurological symptoms, um, you know, when something's not exactly right neurologically, I always think, oh, heavy metals might be an issue here. So we're looking at things like fatigue, brain fog, poor cognition, learning difficulties at school, forgetfulness, you know, that you, a lot of that brain sluggish brain fog um, picture 
migraines, headache, headaches, sorry, dizziness. Um, they play a huge role with mood disturbances and uh, mental health disorders as well. Um, so, you know, from anxiety into bre- depression all the way through to schizophrenia, that ca- heavy metals can play a part in that. Um, food allergies are really common with kids who have high heavy metals. Um, and yeah, so high levels of copper and mercury can lead to mental health disturbances, lots of learning difficulties. Um, but the biggest thing we find is the imbalance of minerals. So when you have heavy metals that are high, it knocks out essential minerals as well. So for instance, if you have high levels of copper, it is very likely that you will have very low levels of essential minerals such as zinc. Um, And this is because the balance of minerals in the body, it's kind of like a gentle dance, like a gentle ratio that needs to be um, kept in like optimal balance or like an optimal ratio for optimal health. So when something comes along such as high mercury or high copper, Um, and overpowers everything at toxic levels, it knocks out the ratios um, of those essential nutrients. And that's when we start to see lots of issues kind of pop up because the the minerals are essential for our bodies to function optimally, really. Um, So when a heavy metal comes along, it makes the minerals deficient and then the wheels start to fall off. Yeah, such a good point. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons we are so, um, you know, so keen on minerals um, and mineral therapy nutritionally for kids because, you know, like with small amounts of, of heavy metals, you know, if you've got good, good amounts of minerals, then it can keep those heavy metals in check, like to a certain degree, of course. Um, so, yeah, I think you've raised a really good point where we want to be looking at that overall picture. It's not just a matter of looking particular heavy metal level in the body and we'll talk about testing in a moment it really is looking at that relationship and the ratio between certain heavy metals and certain um you know of our essential minerals as well so um talk about testing uh there's there's a few different ways that we can test for heavy metals um and we'll do some of this testing here at natural super kids we'll organize that testing for our clients so can you talk more about that yeah so there's different metal um, different methods for detecting heavy metals for children I use um, a hair mineral analysis test as I find this the easiest option so basically you either can do it yourself you just take a hair sample from the back of your child's head as close to the scalp as possible or you can go into the hairdresser the next time they're due for a haircut and just ask the hairdresser to cut out you know a, a decent size um lot of hair really um uh, otherwise you can also test for heavy metals via saliva urine blood serum and also fecal so stool testing as well but I just find with kids the hair option is the easiest um, and it's a really accurate test so that one's the one that I kind of opt for for children the most yeah and like non-invasive you know you don't there's no no needles involved um and the other thing I want to say about hair mineral analysis testing going back to that big picture is that is the testing that does give you that big picture you know you're looking at um heavy metal levels um and you know all of the heavy metals that could be impacting our kids health but also the mineral levels are shown in that hair mineral analysis so it's again not looking at just the individual levels of certain heavy metals it's looking at the relationship and the ratios um of those heavy metals with essential minerals and and other metals in the body that give us as practitioners that full picture yeah so um let like you know, we talked about the fact that our kids are exposed, unfortunately, in the Western world to more and more heavy metals. Um, And so we always love here at Natural Super Kids to talk about, you know, some practical, actionable things that parents can do 
to reduce their ex- that their kids' exposure, their family's exposure to heavy metals. Can you share some practical tips for us? Yeah. So I guess when it comes to heavy metals, you first need to determine the source of impact, like where is this coming from? So yeah. you need to either work with a practitioner to help you figure this out or you need to do some investigating yourself um, within the home or in the environment. Um, so ways to reduce exposure include water filtration. Um, this includes baths. If you know your kids, are, you might drink bath water. I know all toddlers seem to try to do that. Um, so filtrating, uh, drinking water, baths and showers. And this is particularly important if you live in a rural or a mining community due to airborne exposure. Um, reducing seafood high that is high in mercury. So being mindful of large fish such as tuna and a shark and also squid and calamari. So you can look up, you know, the food, the fish, sorry, that are high in mercury. So just being mindful of your consumption of that. Um, another one, this would be dependent on your generation, but amalgam fillings. Um, so they amalgam fillings are mercury fillings. They're kind of not really something that uh, dentists are doing these days for kids. Um, but it also comes into play in terms of preconception care. So um, basically, if you had an amalgam filling that was leaching and you didn't realize your mercury levels are quite high, and then when you conceive your baby, those uh, levels of mercury can transfer to the embryo in utero. So, you know, if you are planning a baby or um, and you know that you've got amalgam fillings, I would really recommend seeing a holistic dentist to either ensure that they're safe, they're not cracked, they're not leaching, or have the safe removal of all your amalgam fillings and replacing them with um, ceramic fillings. Um, and then through to preconception care. So, you know, if you have a history of living in, uh, the UK or in Europe where they, you know, have lead paint, lead copper piping, like old school, you know, the house, the houses are prehistoric. Um, if you have lived in a mining community, if you have any symptoms that we listed before that relate to heavy metal toxicity, um, it's really important that in your preconception care plan that you would test to see whether you have high heavy metals. And then if you did have high med- heavy metals, you would reduce those um, before you conceived because, as I said, they can transfer to the embryo in utero. Um, and, yeah. yeah, and then obviously you are having a child that potentially has high heavy metals and it, it starts from day one. So um, best to kind of get on top of that before you conceive. Um, where you live is really important. As I said, you know, mining communities. Um, I worked for an integrative GP and we saw a lot of clients who lived in mining uh, communities such as Mount Isa here in Queensland, um, which is a coal uh, mining community. And the amount of uh, residents from that community that had toxic levels of high metal, heavy metals was just like through the roof. It was quite crazy how many people we would see from mining communities that would come in for like anxiety, brain fog, um, fatigue, like chronic fatigue. And then when we tested their heavy metal levels, it came down to the fact that they did live and they were breathing and drinking water from um, a community that is linked to either mining or farming. Um, So that is something that people should be mindful of. Um, And then also workplace exposure. So, um, you know, if you're working in, I don't know, a factory that makes batteries um or your you know you work with pesticides in your work whether that's farming or horticulture or something like that um just being mindful that you may have exposure to heavy metals and then lastly personal care products um you know aluminium in deodorants and there's just like 
random ingredients in a lot of these personal care products. Um, so either using an app to see what's actually in your personal care products that you're using. Um, I think the app is called Yucca, Y-U-K-A. I think that's um, an app that you can check for ingredients or just being really mindful and choosing organic, you know, um, just low tox products where you can will just help reduce your exposure to these heavy metals as well. Yeah, such good advice. And I know that's like, that's a lot of information to take on um, for people. And it can be, this area can definitely be overwhelming. But I think, um, yeah, what that I just want to come back to that first point about water, because that is, you know, a really key common source. Um, like you said, particularly if you're in rural or mining communities, like if you're, if you're using tank water, you really want to make sure that that water gets taken tested regularly, you know, there can be heavy metal exposure. There can also be, you know, parasite issues as well. Um, and, you know, here at Natural Super Kids, because we offer online consultations, we are often supporting families in, you know, rural and, and um, farming communities. And I think you mentioned, you know, farming communities, mining communities quite um, often in those, um, you know, those points that you made. So, uh, yeah, like it's, it's not easy to kind of, um, you know, tick all of those boxes, but hopefully that gives people a, um, you know, a, a place to start. Yeah. So- and I also wanted to just say, like, it can be overwhelming as you're listening to this and I'm rattling off all these things, but that's when working with a practitioner is really beneficial because we can kind of figure out the most important, um, thing to change amongst all of that to get you uh, the best result because we're not expecting people to relocate. Uh, You know, I'm not saying you need to now pack up your house and move to, you know, a different community, Um, but it's about how you can live within that community safely and reduce your exposure and working with a practitioner who I guess does this day in, day out, we have the tools and the strategies to kind of, guide you where you are best to spend your money in, you know, investing in a water filter or, um, you know, focusing on preconception care, like what the the best options are for your personal circumstances. Yes, exactly. Very well said. And like, it just takes that mental load away from you because as you can hear, this is a really, you know, complex kind of challenging, uh, I guess, journey to go through. Um, and yeah, so that's what practitioner, you know, practitioners are there for to kind of take that mental load away from you to guide you, support you. Yeah. Work out the priorities, as you said, Mel, and to be a bit of a detective, you know, it's hard to work this stuff out on your own. Um, you know, and we're experienced and have the knowledge to be able to help. So let's, I think you've given a really good foundation. So people have that good understanding of heavy metals Let's move to your case study. So this client um, was an eight-year-old named Billy. Tell us about what he was presenting with and, you know, how, you know, the the process of of supporting um, him and his family. Yeah. So Billy is an eight-year-old boy. Um, His mum came to me after Um, He was experiencing learning difficulties. Um, He had a period of inflammation in his joints where he was unable to kind of walk for a period of time. Um, And then his teacher and also his PE teacher um, pulled his mum aside and said that he was having episodes of blanking out. Um, So it was kind of like the teacher was communicating to him and he kind of glazed over And then he would come back into, I guess, the present moment and not know what was going on. Um, And he also was a bit of a fussy eater. So straight away with, I guess, the blanking out or I was like, I I kind of thought, are these silent seizures? Mm. Um, Mum had never experienced one. So it was just secondhand information from school. 
Um, so I thought learning difficulties, potentially silent seizures, the inflammation in the joints, straight away I thought inflammation and then also neuroinflammation, especially with the blanking out. Um, and then I thought mm, maybe this is a heavy metals picture. So when we're in consult and, you know, our client or our client's parents are talking to us, in the back of our mind, we're always kind of mind mapping or pulling the pieces of the puzzle together. So as they're kind of talking to me, I'm thinking, oh, this sounds suspiciously like it could be related to neuroinflammation, could be related to heavy metals. So um, during the initial consultation, it was noted that the family lived in Western Australia, in, in Australia, um, which is a very large mining state. Um, and then it was also noted that he actually lives on a sheep farm. So high exposure to pesticides, both airborne and in the drinking water. And then when we got to his diet, so we always do a diet analysis, um, his mom noted that his favorite food was squid rings or calamari, um, which he was eating few times a week, like three to four times a week. Because he's a fussy eater, he loved calamari. So his mum knew that she could rely on that as a protein source. And as I know, well, calamari is high in mercury. So um, it all kind of pointed to mercury to me. And I was like, oh, I just think I want to test further to rule out that we don't have a heavy metal toxicity happening here. Um, so we did a hair tissue mineral analysis and the results did come back that he had toxic levels of mercury as well as lithium and copper. So lots of pressure on the neurological system. Um, and then when it came to the treatment plan, uh, we removed squid entirely. We popped a water filtration system in the house because they were using tank water. Um, and then I popped him on a really specific supplementation plan to help his body safely detox the heavy metals. Um, that's really important, especially with children. You can't just willy nilly go out there and start detoxing from heavy metals. Um, they are very toxic. So we need to make sure that we're doing this safely and slowly. Um, and then. I had, my job here was really to restore the minerals that he was deficient in because he had such high heavy metals. Um, as I said earlier, you know, it's like a gentle dance, but if we have something like a big, strong heavy metal in the body, it's going to knock off other micro minerals such as zinc. Um, and, you know, we need to make sure that that balance is working well. Um, uh, so then, uh, outside of that we then also added some lifestyle recommendations to gently help him detoxify which includes you know epsom salt baths and foot soaks um just to kind of gently help his body just ride this wave and kind of support him as he's going through this yes um, i love that i just wanted to uh, jump in and say like it's such an important point you just made uh, because every time i run like a free masterclass which we do a couple of times a year um i always always get this question like how can i uh detox my child from heavy metals like as a general question um or, you know on a on an online kind of masterclass and it's such it's an impossible question to answer generally because it depends on the individual picture of the person and as you are saying it needs to be done with professional support it needs to be done gently and it needs to be done based on that particular child's individual picture and test results so I just wanted to reiterate how important that is and I also just wanted to say what I love about this this treatment plan that you're explaining is how holistic it is you know we've got some simple dietary changes we've got some lifestyle changes we've got some um you know extra uh you know additional things added in like the water filtration on the house which is going to benefit the whole family um and then we've got those you know th those supplements like the icing on on the top of the cake to really support um his body yeah um, so after the first follow-up, which was eight weeks, so we did eight weeks of care, um, of the treatment plan, sorry, 
Um, he came back to see me and his mum noted that he was thriving. So he was doing really well at school um, and he just looked more vibrant. So he had more colour in his face. Um, the school and mum had noted that there were no more uh, seizures or blanking out episodes. Um, he was eating more food. So I guess when it comes to, this is a whole different story, but like when it comes to fussy eating, we can often link that to low zinc levels. And then when it came to his uh, heavy metal, sorry, his hair tissue mineral analysis, we did see the high heavy metals, but we also saw low zinc. So um, when I replenished the zinc, he started to eat more foods. So it's, as I said, that gentle dance when we see, you know, we start to fill the gaps of those micronutrients, then we start to see things like better immunity and better sleep and then, you know, thriving and doing better at school. So um, he was eating more food. So the fussy eating was starting to decrease. Um, and he was just generally a happier, healthier kid. So um, his mum just said that, you know, he had learning difficulties at school, so he was quite self-conscious. Um, he was, I guess, struggling in class because he he knew that he was a little bit behind. Um, but then within these eight weeks, he seemed to really come out of his shell and feel more confident and comfortable in the classroom as well. So um, that's really important to me, like making sure that my clients, my my children clients are thriving they are becoming happier they are enjoying going to school they are you know it's as you said like a big holistic picture here so whilst yes we are looking at reducing heavy metals we're also making sure that he is a happy kid that can go to school and enjoy it so yeah that that was really important to me that he, she noted that he started enjoying going to school and started enjoying learning as well so yeah, and then um, we just kind of tweak things after that first follow-up and, you know, our goal here is really to ensure that that uh, high level of mercury is slowly reducing down at the same time that those micronutrients that he is deficient in are creeping up and then all the pieces of the puzzle start to come together um, and, you know, he'll start eating more foods, he won't be as fussy as um, much and... Um, school will become a bit more easier and yeah we'll we'll see what happens from there so I'm due to see him again um, in April and then um, we'll see what uh, supplementation we can tweak here because we never uh, necessarily need this supplementation long term we're here to fix an issue the issue um, is the high heavy metals once that is resolved then you know we just move into maintenance phase Yes, I love that. Such a great example of like, you know, the positive flow on effect that can be, um, you know, that can result from a holistic treatment plan like this. And what came to my mind as you were talking, you know, you mentioned that neuroinflammation um, at the start was like a, a, you know, a red flag for you, something you were thinking about. And when we can reduce that neuroinflammation, yes, from reducing the heavy metal load in the body, but from all of those other dietary and lifestyle factors as well, that is going to impact mood positively. Um, and, you know, that overall brain health. Um, I mean, this isn't generally related to children, but, um, you know, neuroinflammation over the years is linked with things like dementia and Alzheimer's and multiple sclerosis. And we're seeing more and more of these neurological and brain conditions in society generally. And, you know, these things are a buildup of, of like lots of our habits and um, dietary factors and lifestyle factors that build up over time to increase that inflammation in the brain and a neurological system. So, um, you know, it's just so nice to think about the, you know, the, how this uh, child's health has turned around for the long term because of this um, pretty simple treatment plan as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, if we can test and kind of determine the the source of the issue um, and get onto that as soon as possible, you know, it we we can move on, I guess, and help this child thrive. And that's that's a really, I guess, 
important thing when it comes to testing. You know, specific testing is essential for specific conditions um, and that gives us more answers where we can get to the root cause and, you know, get through that and, and treat that so then the child can go on and, yeah, live a really happy and healthy life. Yes, definitely. And so if anyone is interesting and thinking, like is listening, sorry, and thinking, oh my gosh, I, you know, I want to get this heavy metal testing done on my child. The way to get started with that uh, through us is to book an initial uh, consultation. So you can do that through the website. We will make sure the booking link is in the show notes. You can easily find it on our naturalsuperkids.com website as well. You can, you know, find out all the information and you can book directly directly on the website with Mel. And in that initial consultation, Mel will determine whether, um, you know, this hair mineral analysis testing is applicable for this child um, or other testing might be applicable. Uh, So it's always really important to I guess, have that first consultation because we often get queries, don't we, of like, I'm interested in this test. Can I order it through you? We like to make sure that it's actually necessary and the most appropriate test for that child um, within an initial consultation. So, uh, yeah, if you're interested in finding out more, then you can book um, an appointment with Mel through our website. Anything else you want to share before we finish up, Mel? I just wanted to say like this isn't just applicable to kids either. So um, if you are an adult, you know, a mum or a dad or you know somebody who has um, similar symptoms, um, yeah, we can help adult clients as well. So um, this is open to everyone. Um, The testing is, you know, relatively easy. It gets posted out to your doorstop. and you know you just follow the instructions and post it back to the clinic um back to the lab and they analyze it and then send us the results and then we will formulate a treatment plan that's specific to your needs yes yes thank you for explaining that and such a good point applicable to adults as well um i've got a story like a personal story to share uh i'll save that for another episode (laughs) um about you know my hair mineral analysis and um some neurological symptoms that i was having many years ago but um yeah I, i won't talk about that now maybe that's for another episode thank you so much for joining us and you know running through that amazing case study um and information with us mel Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for listening, everybody. And as always, if you've got any questions, uh, you can email us, jessica at naturalsuperkids.com, or you can reach out to us via Instagram as well. We love hearing from our podcast listeners in our DMs, messages on Instagram. So feel free to ask any questions via email um, or on Instagram if you have any. And we will be back next week with a new episode. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Head on over to our website, naturalsuperkids.com for the show notes for this episode, as well as a whole heap of inspiration to help you raise healthy and happy kids. I'll see you next week.